Hello friends, this video on hydrogen part 20 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let's now learn hydrogen peroxide. So what is hydrogen peroxide? It is a very important chemical and it is used in pollution and control treatment. It's very very important chemical for industry. The shape is it is given here. But before we go to the shape, the history is discovered by Tenard in 1918 very very unstable it's very very unstable and it doesn't occur freely in nature it is used for rocket fuel too right and if you see this uh, structure is something like this it is in different planes actually if you see this is in different planes this is um, going inside the planes coming outside the plane we'll, we'll show more three-dimensional structure of h2o2 but h2o2 looks like this this is uh, h h Spore, this is spore. You see, these are different plane. They are different planes altogether. So you want to now prepare hydrogen peroxide. It's very unstable. You want to prepare it in the lab. There are two methods to actually to prepare. Uh, one is from sodium peroxide, it's from barium peroxide. So let's take the sodium peroxide. Sodium peroxide is nothing but Na2O2. What we do? You add H2SO4 to this and make it dilute and cold also else will blast this guy will give Na2SO4 and H2O because I told this guy is very very reactive it is little hot also it will react right so H2O2 you want to conserve it so make the sulfuric acid very cold and tire same thing from barium peroxide also you can do BaO2 you want to get from H2SO4 Again, same thing, you make it dilute plus cold. So it becomes BaSO4 plus H2. The quality in this case is not very good. So, what we can do is we can uh, use phosphoric acid. So, in this case, it will get BO3, PO4, 2 plus 3 H2. This quality is better. It's all lab preparation. In the lab you want to prepare hydrogen peroxide, you can use sodium peroxide or you can use barium peroxide. Barium peroxide you can react with sulfuric acid or H3PO4 or dilute. Let's talk about the industrial preparation of hydrogen peroxide. As I told, this is very widely used in industry, so there has to be good ways to prepare hydrogen peroxide. So there are two ways actually. The one is by the electrolysis of 50% H2SO4. The other is by two from two ethyl thrine, two ethyl anthraquinone. There are two ways. So the first is from the electrolysis of H2SO4. In this case, what we do is we have this 50% H2SO4 here, right? Dilute H2SO4. And what we do is we'll have the reaction. I'll show you. What happens is my H2SO4 breaks into H plus plus HSO4 minus ions and then HSO4 minus ions two HSO4 minus ion react to form peroxidisulfuric acid and that reacts to water to get H2O2 let's do this right, let's write this at cathode what happens cathode I get 2H plus it gets two electron from cathode, it gets hydrogen gas. So it gives me hydrogen gas. Simple. At anode, since I don't have electrons, so what happened is this uh, HSO4 minus, which you have got, right? So this two reacts to form peroxidisulfuric acid. That is HO3S. You see these two reacts to form this. I like the name of this. PHU or sulfuric acid. And will give you two electrons. Right? At anode. 
because two of them are getting matched. Now this guy, which we have got S2, S2, O8, this whole thing, right? Peroxidisulfuric acid, when you react this with water, because it is dilute now, 50%, right? It has water here. So it gives you H2O2 and 2S2. So Okay, so I've got S2. Easy one. Cathode, you get hydrogen gas, and here you get S2. It goes up. The next is from 2 ethyl anthraquinone. So, let me change the color. So, I have. So the next was from 2 ethyl anthraquinone. So in this it is pretty easy. I have 2 ethyl anthraquinone. When you pass oxygen to it, it gives H2. So we just oxidation of 2 ethyl anthraquinone will give you S2. I can show you the reaction for this. Let's draw 2 ethyl anthraquinone. So this is my 2 ethyl anthraquinone. This is 2 ethyl anthraquinone. When you oxidize an air, this will give you. Oh, sorry, this is OH, OH, to OH. Ethyl anthraquinone, yeah. So this guy will give you. This becomes double bond O. Right and plus S2. Correct. And if you want to get it back, because we just can't use this costly compounds to create what uh, H2O2, we'll again do hydrogenation in presence of my palladium or nickel catalyst. So what will happen is if you add hydrogen to this and this becomes black. Correct. So how can we increase the concentration of H2O2 because the H2O2 retrieved is has very low concentration. But we can't increase just by boiling it because it's very reactive, right? So, it, so what will happen? The moment you boil it, it will decompose into oxygen water. And I want to increase the concentration of this H2O2. So there is a step involved. The first is you have to do evaporate this very slowly on water bath, very slowly, and then you have to evaporate in vacuum chamber, and then you distill. You do distillation under reduced pressure and low pressure, and then you have to remove the last trace of water, and that's how you increase the concentration of H2. It's a very tedious process because it's very very reactive. You do a very slow evaporation in the water bath. Um, and the vacuum chamber do the evaporation and then you have to dis do distillation in the reduced pressure and then you remove the last trace of water. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.